We're kneeling in the wet sand Propping up a wall breach Quick before the next wave Rushes in Rushes in Moat around the castle Is filling up with water But hope springs eternal All hands ready Here it comes My name is Richard Schindel I'm from the United States, from New York And the kind of music I make is uh, Could be called many things It's basically uh, I write songs, lyrics um, I play guitar um, I'm a singer-songwriter, I suppose And it's a mixture of of uh, American folk music, American country music, rock and roll, pop. Um, so it's in that general ballpark of, of, of popular music. The ramparts are sinking, we dig on, we dig on. Then out of the blue, there's an orange canary On our driftwood flagpole Shovels down, boys Step away song you're referring to when you mention social awareness is um, is called Did I Hear Wrong? And it's a, it's a new song. It's not been released on any record. In fact, this will probably be the first uh, public uh, airing of the song. I have played it live, but I've never recorded it. And um, the song, I don't usually write songs like that. I, I, I tell stories, many of my songs are almost like little short stories or uh, vignettes and um, so writing a song which is explicitly political, although many of my songs do have some kind of political content, it tends to be implied or tacit and not so overt. But I feel as if um, when I started to write this song and I wanted to deal with this theme of immigration on the southern border of the United States, I felt like I could not be uh, in any way um, elliptical or opaque about it, that I needed to just go right to the, to the, to the issue. And uh, so it is a bit of a departure for me to, to do that. The song is from the point of view of uh, someone trying to cross the desert in perhaps Arizona to get to the border to seek asylum. And he's with his daughter and they're, they're searching for water. And um, so it directly deals with the very, very terrible uh, political context uh, in which uh, they find themselves, uh, that context being a president who is using the, uh, the misfortune and desperation in most cases of innocent people in order to further his political uh, agenda in the most cynical and... Uh, uh, horrible way so that's that's the departure that's yes it's a political song but it's a bit of a it's, it's a bit different for me to say it so straight I finally found a cool patch of sand I finally found a cool patch of sand But it won't last long Cause the sun will move And we'll move too My name's Miguel My little girl here Is solely that My name's Miguel My little daughter here Is solely that Don't talk to me of choices I only did What I had to do I 
heard that freedom over there, freedom over there. Or did I hear wrong? Many of my songs, like I said, do have a political vector or component to them. They tell stories of people who are in politically charged situations. But they're just not quite as explicit. It's, it's, it's the, uh, the implicit identification with the narrator of the song, uh, the empathy, if you will, with the narrator of the song who might be, uh, you know, I might be using the first person, but I'm, in ha but I'm not actually the person. It's a first-person character-based song. Um, I've done that before. So there, there are po politics in my songs, insofar as there's politics in, in any kind of writing, uh, except you know the most, you know, frivolous kind, you know, greeting cards or something. But even those have some politics in them. Um, these days, I do feel a bit more of an imperative to to say things and that's been quite a say something more direct and that's been quite a challenge for me because that's not where I am aesthetically comfortable it's I'm aesthetically comfortable in a slightly different place and so it is a challenge and I think it's a challenge for a lot of people and it's also a challenge just to figure out how to how to capture the crazy horror of what is happening these days. I, hear all, I heard that freedom over there, freedom over there. What did I hear on? I heard that mercy over there, right over there. What did I hear wrong? I began writing songs uh, late in life. I began writing songs when I was 27. Yeah, and although I had tried prior to that, but I had never succeeded. I had been playing the guitar since I was eight. So that had always been something which was very important to me. And although I did not know that I was beginning a life in music when I did that, I was just a kid who wanted to play the guitar. The idea of having a life in music, you know, having a career and traveling to lovely places like Amsterdam did not occur to me um, until much later. And it didn't occur to me because I never had anything I thought special to offer. I was, I was a guitar player. And I was a, I was a good guitar player, but not a great guitar player. I mean, you need to be really, really good just to be a guitar player, say a session guitar player. And I was okay, but I knew I was not that good. Um, and it was only when I wrote some songs, like I said, when I was 27, that I felt like I had something distinct to offer, something that was not like anybody else. It was me. It was me being an individual. And I think that's something which is necessary in music and in any kind of art, that, that the artistic product be... Uh, just idiosyncratic, as, as much the product of an, indiv of an individual as possible. In other words, not uh, in any way uh, derivative. Well, that's impossible. Take, I'm going to take that back. Everything is derivative. But we have to be ourselves. And if you're not yourself, you're just copying somebody else. And I felt like I had something that was a good reflection of my self. So uh, that's how I got into music. I wrote a few songs. When I lost you It was April, May I can't be more precise I was drinking then The time frame is awash But I lost you Of that I am quite sure all your reinforcements, all your messages, I got them all. The 
sure I was drinking But that is no excuse The drink brought out the worst in me But the worst in me was me nevertheless But I've learned to live with it now Oh, but that doesn't mean forget how careless I was with you then you who were once my friend just find the thing that nobody else does nobody can be completely themselves we don't exist in a vacuum nobody does not no one is an island. But we're also completely individual in some way, in some place. And in order to be successful or happy as a musician, I think it's important to find that thing that is the thing that only you do and, and try to just stick to that. Just be yourself. Um, these days, I find there's a lot of uh, a lot of people who sound very similar, you know, because everybody can hear everybody, and so lo locality, um, people developing their music in isolation or within a certain tradition that isn't easily connected to another tradition, geographically, for example, is becoming harder and harder because everyone can see everything all the time. Like I can, I can go online and I can I can listen to uh, you know Brazilian music or or you know Senegalese music or uh, you know Canadian whatever I can do it all and it's all right there available to me and so the fear that I have is that people will that this will create a sort of homogenization and that the cure for homogenization is to is is to build uh, is to find out what your community has that nobody else has and to find out what you have that nobody else has Hi, I'm Richard Schindel from New York, and uh, I'm on tour here in Holland, where I love it. And I'm heading to the UK next, and you are listening to theblueswradio.com. <laughs> 